Hi everyone, um, it's Ryan Hall from Iconic Film Style. It wasn't that great. Um, that was just a few scenes um, from the movie Arthur, um, starring the great uh, Dudley Moore, John Gielgud, uh, and Liza Minnelli from 1981. Uh, to film, I thought, I want to pick a classic film from time to time. What not like what better to choose than Arthur, a comedy. It's got romance um, and it stars one of the great comic actors, Dolly Moore, as Arthur Bark, um, who is a millionaire. He comes from a very, very rich family and um, he uh, he's virtually, uh, well, of some sort of like, functioning alcoholic, I guess you would call him, but very likable character, charming, um, and he has a very good heart. He cares about people. Um, and when the film begins, as you saw for some of the scenes, he's just doing whatever he wants to do, um, going out to fancy restaurants, uh, taking ladies of the night, uh, having a good laugh, drinking huge amounts of scotch, um, and doing it quite well, having a joke about everything. And uh, then um, he meets Liza Minnelli's character, who's a poor waitress, who's actually you know, he catches her shoplifting a tie, which is for her father. She gets caught. He bails her out. He helps her out of the situation. Um, and he basically falls in love at first sight. So that's an important part of the film. And then from there, he is told basically from his father, he's got to marry um, into a rich family. Otherwise, he'll be disinherited. He's going to inherit $750 million dollars um which would be like two million dollars in today's money and uh and then you know a lot of comedy in shoes because uh he doesn't want to marry the rich girl from the johnson family um he wants to do his own thing but he also doesn't want to be poor either so it's it is a very funny film a lot of funny lines in the film um especially when uh Arthur has too much to drink. He becomes very, very comical. And um, yeah, I highly rate the film uh, as a, as a comedy, some film you can, you can put on from time to time and watch it. It doesn't date too much, really just a good situation comedy, but it was trying to tell uh, an important story about um, about growing up. Um, the money isn't everything. Money doesn't buy you love. Um, so it was definitely had a, strong message there um, but I wanted to focus a little bit on some of the clothes from the film that Dully Moore wore um, which I'll just share my screen so we can have a look so a um, suit I've covered um, on uh, my Instagram page uh iconic film style was the it's like a cream gabardine suit um that uh arthur wears um at the start of the film so he's been there for a night on the town living it up brings the uh the hooker to the restaurant and um you know makes a scene and everything has a big laugh falls out of the his rolls royce and the next day he has to see visit his father and he's basically told um you know, if, unless you marry into the Johnson family, um, you'll be disinherited. So he, it's interesting he chose this cream suit to wear rather than, uh, you know, an actual business suit. He doesn't look like he goes going to the office for business. He, he's not a businessman. He doesn't want to work at all. He just wants to do whatever he wants to do and, and drink himself silly and have a good time all the time. So it's interesting the choice of the cream suit. Um, the suit itself... Um, not hugely dated to the time period really um it's got like a fairly padded shoulder line um and it's got a low gorge through the lapels but not massive but it's got quite a close fit uh wears a nice striped shirt with it which is closer inspection it's definitely like a navy stripe white stripe and it could be like a like a light topaz color in between uh, and of course the bold um, blue tie to set it all off, which has a slight olive pattern uh, throughout. Uh, I did like the pocket square, personally speaking. Um, 
but I thought it was very close in color to the suit. Um, maybe, you know, a combination of like a mid blue and, and cream would have been nicer. Um, make some sort of paisley pattern perhaps. But yeah, so that suit definitely stood out, um, stood out to me um, when I watched the film. Um, because if you look at a lot of the other outfits in it, he wears like a navy three-piece suit, which I can find as well. We'll have a look at some of the other clothes. Um, there's the, the famous uh, dinner black dinner suit um, from the opening of the film. The uh, classic peak lapel. It's a it's a three piece. Um, you know, quite a padded shoulder line. Not hugely dated to the time period. I guess the bow tie is pretty wide, but you see Tom Ford making similar stuff these days. Um, I think all the clothes look great on Dully Moore, considering he was very short. He's like five foot two. Um, he had uh, club foot as a child and started his growth, so he was quite short, but um, well, very short. And But the suits make him look longer and leaner, probably than what he actually was at the time. Um, and they're pretty tasteful. Um, like it's got like a fly front of the shirt. Um, so I thought of a whole, it looked like, um, didn't look very dated um, at all, a lot of the clothes. And I guess, um, the dinner suit he wears to his engagement party later in the, um, later in the film is, is very, very interesting. It's like an off white color and, uh, it has the, uh, sort of the blue shirt with a slight sort of, um, you know, it's not a plain front, it's like a pattern front. And the contrasting white collar with a white bow tie. Um, you know, it's not an outfit I really wear today, but I thought it suited the character quite well because he doesn't, like, he wants to have fun. He's all about fun. He obviously didn't want to go there um, dressed in the black peak lapel suit, the nice shawl collar. Um, so, yeah, I actually thought it, it fit the scene and, and fit this character um quite well really um but uh yeah i like that it's sort of like an off-white color with the with the blue shirt um contrasting so um yeah I, I actually think it really worked for the character um it's not something i would wear um i might like wear an ivory dinner jacket or something like that but i don't know if i'd go into this full full uh, regalia that uh, Dudley Moore's wearing. But yeah, there's um, some other pieces. Obviously when he gets married, he wears the, um, the morning dress, um, which is very, you know, which is pretty traditional, um, you know, getting married in America, especially somebody from his wealthy family that he wears, you know, the type of clothes doesn't really stand out to me specifically. Doesn't really, I don't find it really noticeable, uh, notable at all. Um, you know, it's like a, um, like a topee colored suit. Um, he wears when he goes on a date with Liza Minnelli's character that's quite good. It's got like a fine check pattern through it, possibly linen as well. Um, yeah. So I actually quite liked it. I thought 
thing about the suits was they didn't really scream the time period. I guess it was only early eighties and it was most of the fashions were fairly classic at that time. But what he he sort of a lot of his outfits are hinting at that um that power dressing that was coming in in the eighties. Um it's just starting to come in, especially the built up, you know, built up shoulders and um the bolder tie striped shirts. So um yeah, so that was starting to come in in the early eighties. So there's starting to be a little bit of that influence in how the costume designer um uh yeah costume designer pick some of the outfits and you know this when you look through there is some great um posters that were done up uh you know obviously drinking in the car um of course, there's the famous scene where he's in the bath, uh, having a bubble bath in the morning, wearing the top hat, having martinis. Quite iconic images. Sir, Sir John Gilgood, you know, he he won an Oscar Best Supporting Actor for playing Hobson, the 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 uh, what you know the witty butler, who's really acts like as a real father figure to the um, Arthur char- character, um, and is a big influence in him on his life and. Uh, but yeah, it's some great posters that came out. Of course, another notable thing is Bert Bacharach did the score, which is a beautiful score. It's very elegant, very Bert Bacharach, and the famous song for the film, Arthur's Theme, The Best That You Can Do, which won the Oscar, which had a lot of composers like Carol Baker Sager, um, Australia's own Peter Allen, of course, and of course, Bert Bacharach. And uh, that was very well known, as you would have seen in the in the video at the start of uh, the v- the vlog. I mean, it's very iconic. Um, but this is a movie um, that, uh, yeah, that um, you can just chuck on, and it's a feel good film. Has a good ending. Um, I highly recommend it, especially if you want a bit of a laugh, and we all need a bit of laugh during this Corona pandemic. Um, and yeah, uh, I give it, um, I'd give the film three and a half, four stars. It is very funny. Um, I don't recommend the sequel, uh, after two on the rocks. Um, it wasn't very good at all. Um, basically it's totally more drunk for pretty much 90 minutes. Um, it's yeah, it, this didn't work. I didn't think they took the story into a good realm. Um, you know, and I didn't think it was specifically funny. Um, mind you, there is some interesting clothes in there, like some sports jackets I thought were interesting um, and suits, but uh, yeah, nothing that stood out to me. Uh, I want to pick interesting films like this that people wouldn't expect me to cover um, on this vlog. And uh, you can pick up this, um, this film quite easily, so I recommend you do have a bit of a laugh and look at some 1980s, uh, early 1980s menswear. Um, yeah, I think um, that's pretty much all I want to say on uh, the film. If anybody has any questions, please um, you know, uh, direct message me on Instagram or on my uh, YouTube channel and I'll answer them. Um, but thanks again for tuning in and um, we'll be putting up another vlog uh, soon.